Big boy neighborhood. All righty now, man. We just had a hell of a hell of a <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah, with, with Jackie Cruz in the neighborhood. Yes. First off, welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you so much. It's good to see you in person because you only live so big and like our screens and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when you do get someone that comes into the neighborhood and you get a chance to hang out with them mm. after you kind of watch their work, it's always good mm-hmm. to just sit down. But welcome to the neighborhood. Am I taller in person? Yes, you are. <laughs> do, do you get well, of course you're gonna say that, Louis. How tall are you? Five five. Bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, everybody's taller in person. Right? <laughs> That's true. When it, do you get that a lot, Jackie? I do. Really? I get, you look prettier in person. Oh. And, um, what they want you to look like? Yeah. Well, new well, black okay. I'm in I prison. I get it. Yeah. 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 Like, you don't look like a convict right now. <laughs> and I didn't know and you were the color. Where's the teardrop? I'm like, ugh. I don't know at <laughs> all. Now, let me ask you this. If you were to go to an event, right, or somebody just ask you, like, you know, and you know how sometimes people use, they'll use you to just show up, you know, the, yeah. the fake ass invite. Would somebody <laughs> yeah. ask you to put a teardrop on and come by? Of course. Oh, uh, how do you feel about I that? I do not feel good about okay, that. Okay, so I want to ask you. <laughs> you call I, you flat guy all the time? No, I'm not. I'm Jackie <laughs> Cruz. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is it hard to play a character so well? And mm-hmm. not and and know how to kind of turn it on and turn it off. Yeah, I mean, when I drink a little tequila, I become a little black. Like I feel like fine. I was like, "What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me." But <laughs> we're we doing so much in and being an artist as well. And how do you kind of separate where you where you are, where you have been, and where you want to be? Well, um, I always tell the truth, even as an actor, you know, if I'm playing Flaca, like I tell her truth. So for me, you know, writing music has been very therapeutic yeah. and it's telling my truth. Is for, music your mm, first kind of so-called yeah, my artistic love? love? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I fell in love <laughs> after watching The Bodyguard in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> <laughs> se fue la luz. Like with, with Whitney Houston? Yeah, yeah. Whitney Houston. Go ahead now. So se fue la luz means that the light like went out, went out mm-hmm. like during the movie and everybody was like, oh my God. And everyone was speaking, you know, Spanish, but obviously only Whitney, you yeah. know, sang in English. But it was hilarious. I fell in love with music, with acting, with everything. And I told my mom. How old were you? I was like six, seven. That's I said, crazy. Mommy, that's what I want to be when I grow up. I'm oh, like, awesome. Whitney. Did your mom, <laughs> you know, did your mom believe the, like, in it? Yeah. <laughs> did your mother believe in it? Um, Yeah, she moved me to California See? from the Dominican Republic when I was 15 wow. years old. That's crazy because now when, when you say it now with the success... Mm-hmm. It sounds like, oh, okay, that's genius. Yeah. But kids, man, we're we're so open and so wide, and you can't suffocate those dreams and those aspirations when when a kid tell you something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you fall in love with this image of being an entertainer. Mm-hmm. When does that kind of take on where do you write do you write your first song? Are you yeah. doing parodies? Well, like, my mom's not stupid. She's like, let me see if you got what it takes. Right. You know, she's from Queens. <laughs> she's like, see now. <laughs> Let's see, see now. Let me see. So she put me in uh, classes in the DR. Like, I played the saxophone for 10 years. So I was mostly involved in jazz music in the beginning and, and playing the sax. And then, you know, I really didn't take vocal lessons until, like, recently. Right. But, like, acting and, and music and uh, singing was just something I love to do. So you say when we, when we speak about you, it's entertainer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we were we used to see back in the days, like whatever they call the triple threat, where it'd be like, oh, sing, act, dance, whatever it may mm-hmm. be. But you fell in love with being an entertainer, right? That's that's mm-hmm. that that's what's amazing about your story and the journey. Yeah. And then I always say, man, I'm just gonna throw certain things up against the wall. Whatever sticks, that's what I'm gonna be. At this moment, right. you know, mm-hmm. so when you do start getting more acting, is it you never abandon music, never. but it's, it's always kind of a this and that. Yeah. I mean, when I when I, I, I know I don't know if you guys know I had a terrible accident when yeah. I was 16, like brain surgery that went through That's the window. So crazy, like, man. Hollywood almost killed it's me. Oh, so crazy. When I was young. You Weren't know? you on the way to like Wango Tango? Or yeah, I was on the way to Wango Tango. And you know, Kiss is right yeah. here. I'm we need to go down perform here. one day for yeah, Wango you Tango. Are. <laughs> you know what? Kiss is the next studio oh over here. We should go knock on their door. No, we should go fuck some. Yeah. 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 So you were I on your way ticket. as a 16 year old to Wango Tango. Mm-hmm. And what happened? I, I was homeless at the time because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I was being that rebel kid who my mom moved me here and she, I didn't want to follow her rules. And we lived in a little studio apartment in Koreatown and my blow up bed was in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, Ma, I don't want this anymore. She's like, all right. You want to go be an adult? Go be an adult. And then I almost died. Right. And then I went through the window. I wasn't wearing my seatbelt 20 feet away from the car. And 
Woke up two weeks later, come to find out I almost didn't make it, was in a 72-hour coma and woke up with my eyes crossed, my face crooked, scabs everywhere, and I, I had to learn how to walk and everything all over again. How do you take that at, at 16 years of age? Because to some, that's like a checkout. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I tried like, to check out. Yeah, and, and how do you, like, not go through the depression, but there's so many, so many questions from from vanity yeah. to life you know what i'm saying yeah. like like how does a 16 year old and talk about that in the rearview mirror because mm -hmm. at the time it it has to seem like everything is done yeah so when you look back how did you get through that well thanks to my mom for yeah. sure but like she definitely told me, Jackie, you're not supposed to be here. And she's mm. such a hustler. She's like, you got to make it even more now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, mom. <laughs> but, like, I didn't listen to my mom, of course, because the way I looked. And, and Hollywood was a place of beauty mm -hmm. and a place of people that didn't look like me. Mm -hmm. So, again, it felt impossible. And um, I wanted to give up, and I tried to give up. You know, I took pills, and mm -hmm. I had to, you know, pump my stomach, and... I went to a rehabilitation center and I met this little girl called Melly. She was 10 years old oh. and she was, she had brain surgery too. She got hit by a car and she could never walk again. And she just came into my room very like powerful. And she's like, you had brain surgery too, huh? And I'm like depressed in the corner. Like, yeah. And she's like, I think you're really pretty. Oh. And I know that doesn't mean anything, but like to me, it meant the world. I mean, this little girl who can never walk again. Looking mm -hmm. at me, seeing my destiny before I can even see it. And how much did you hold that when you think of, because even with Melly, the name, like, there's mm -hmm. a story to it, mm -hmm. but there's a texture there. How many, and not a, a number, Holding but that, <laughs> that had to play in your head so many times. Even when you thought, like, like things aren't going right. I'm pretty sure Melly pops into your head even to this day. Oh yeah, we're best friends. That's oh. beautiful. So she made She's it as probably well. Listening yeah. to this, hi Melly, I love you. That <laughs> is dope. I, I, cause so Melly yeah. made it. Yep. She She's seeing you my get music through video. it, and and she so she has a chance or understand what those words meant. And it's crazy how a moment or certain words could come from somebody else that you never thought. I remember years ago, Jackie, I was in church. We were homeless, too. We stayed at the place called the Sunlight Mission. And I remember this lady came to me. I'd never seen her before in my life. And she said to me, she said, don't let the devil get you. Mm. And anything that I did in life, this lady's voice kept popping back in. Good, especially when I was tripping on, on some of the bad stuff. I would always like, oh, okay, no, don't let the devil get you. Don't let the devil get you. And I don't know who this lady is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can't write about her. I can't put her in my music video. You know what I'm yeah. saying? She probably don't even know it's me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you take that energy and you kind of so-called get yourself together. Mm -hmm. is I started that like the only one who could walk in the rehabilitation. So I almost started volunteering and all the kids felt like, you know, I was one of them. So they were afraid of the doctors. So I would always, they would call my name so I could, they could take their medicine. And, and I just started helping out and feeling like I needed to be there. Mm -hmm. for How other long reasons. was the rehabilitation? Like how I, I got out in my 18th birthday. And you oh. went in around? No, I was 17 when I went in the rehabilitation. So about a year or a year or so? Mm, yeah, like six months because I was 17 and a half because I was in ICU for a long time. Oh, wow. Damn. And anyone that's been anywhere close to a hospital yeah. for any duration of time, like, it's you terrible. get, yeah, Not a fun place even to be there out. you're ready to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're ready to just to, to kind of get out. How does it start to so-called turn around for you? Um, it was, you know, she saw the strength in me and my mom, you know, and I went back to the Dominican Republic with all my aunts where they were really, you know, just happy to see me because mm -hmm. I wasn't even supposed to be there. And some of them couldn't travel here. Does that make you work different? It does. Yeah. And I appreciate everything, like everything. And, and that's why I, I stay the same, I feel. Because I know I could go away mm -hmm. just like this. And that industry can try to, like, really shift and change you. Yeah, and, and the then, people around you also oh, try to change you, and especially in Hollywood, you know. When you go through some, like, real stuff, mm -hmm. and then when you see what other people trip off of, you're like, man. <laughs> Even right now, I'm tripping over stupid shit, and I'm like, God, I've been through way too much. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Like, like, why am I tripping? I'm like, I damn with you if you're ready, baby girl. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, Orange is the New Black, obviously, I think opened a lot of doors, not just for female actresses, but for Latina actresses as well. 
I'm sure you've been through your obstacles before, quote unquote, making it. But now that you have made a presence, you're doing what you want to do. What types of obstacles are you experiencing in the industry? Well, you know, opportunities uh, that everyone says that there's, you know, more opportunities now that I'm on Orange, you Mm -hmm. know, whatever. But um, yeah, you know, maybe I have more auditions, but it's still the same audition. Mm. I still don't look like what they want me to look like. You know what I mean? I still don't look enough of what they want. So instead of me sitting here complaining about Hollywood not like letting me in, you know, I started to produce my own thing. Yeah. So I started my own production company called Unspoken Film. My yeah. first short called The Dying Kind mm-hmm. was a 1900s piece. Hey. I always wanted to be in a western. I was like, let me do my own western. <laughs> so uh, like, no need to get, my mom me got raped by the white man. Oh. <laughs> You're like, man, if your table, I'll be on my own table. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. I, I brought, I want to bring my own table and sit people on my table that deserve to be there that nobody maybe gave the opportunity to and use my platform for not just myself, Mm -hmm. but for others. And um, that is exactly what I'm doing. And um, instead of me sitting here complaining, I'm like, no, there's so many uh, undiscovered talent and so Mm -hmm. many unspoken stories that I wish to share. Mm -hmm. And and why not? I put my own money into my music. Mm -hmm. I put my own money into my productions. I bet on myself. and, And now... You know, now I have an investor who who's willing to bet on me because I bet on me. That's you know? so. <laughs> Why is it so important for you to be such a strong voice for Latinos and Latinas, especially in Hollywood? Because I never had one. Oh, mm. say it. I never had a voice like you know a role model. My sister's twelve. Mm-hmm. She looks different because we're Dominican. You know, she has dark skin with crazy long straight hair i'm like how'd you get that straight hair (laughs) curly hair curly hair no i have curly hair i do the keratin girl (laughs) and um and that's why i look different i came here with brown skin you know from the dr with long curly hair and they didn't know what to do with me Mm. and um i just don't want my my sister to struggle as much as i did you know so i'm in the front line right now and i'm gonna get hurt the most but at least Mm. i know that i'm helping Mm -hmm. my generations Mm -hmm. and that's what i'm trying to do do you feel like meeting some of the cast members on orange was helpful in building that confidence and that strength to be able to speak up because there's so many strong women on that show yeah and we didn't start like that okay Mm -hmm. you know we we grew we grew Mm -hmm. up on that show and finding out you know the the prison system how corrupt it was and i didn't know a lot of these things going in you know and uh i i pretty much you know i have a i i you know being latina you see all that mm-hmm. stuff, you know, and then to be in it, it just felt like it wasn't really acting anymore. Yeah. Right. To, for the last, point. like, I know, I know this story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the last season, you guys tell a lot of the stories of people in detention centers mm-hmm. and immigration policies. Was that something that you were proud of? That was part of the final season. The actual number two was given yeah. out. Mm-hmm. And they, and the ice, um, they brought it down. They brought it down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, it was, there was no really acting at the, this, you know, I, I literally went to my premiere and then I went to El Paso to, um, to you know, uh, protest the detention center. Mm-hmm. So I went from literally acting it to being in front of the lines, mm-hmm. you know, and like talking to the kids whose, you know, family is, is uh, separated them and finding out that those children don't smell like children anymore, mm-hmm. that they're scared to be in there, that mm-hmm. they can't even get a hug. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard. And, and I work a lot with Carmen Perez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's my mentor. And... We're starting our own uh, company called Ella.com and using her culture and 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 uh, my culture and her work and merging and and trying to you know get us Latinos to vote mm. and and understand that we have so much mm. to offer and we're a big part of this country and we need we need a voice and you know what I don't even know what your question was. <laughs> but, <laughs> were you uh, proud? Were you but proud? But you know what I do have to ask. You know, and and, and this isn't from me, but why care you know how sometimes it's like i got it i'm good why why care why why look back look around look up and down for other people maybe it's because of what happened to me because i'm not supposed to be here so Mm -hmm. if i'm here i need to make a big difference Mm -hmm. so i i need to leave something behind you know Mm -hmm. what i mean because i've been through way too much and like like it it started off selfish right i hear but it's not the i and me as opposed to us and we I heard that. That's beautiful. When when you look at it now and we start looking at accolades and we start looking at, you know, under 30 lists and under 40 lists and the mm-hmm. Emmys, and those are great accolades. Do you feel like you haven't even begun yet? Yeah. Yeah. 
it feels like the beginning to me. <laughs> and you know, um, I didn't I didn't finish college or whatever, but I do feel like what I wanted to study was art and like everything I learned on Orange is the New Black was my college. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, tuition into the school of experience. Oh huh? my goodness. Yeah. And, and that's the people life. I worked around and all the questions I asked and even if they didn't believe that I could do what I want to do, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I started Orange. Now I'm an activist. I want to direct. I write. Like all these crazy things and my album I've been working on my whole life and finally you know it's it's here what was that moment when you said all right we're doing the debut album uh you know everybody was like do an EP do this and that and I'm like nah and I it's been (laughs) yeah and I thought of this name a long time Mm -hmm. ago hija de Chavez because that's my father's name and um I was working in Nordstrom at the time when he was, you know, I met him again at 23. Mm-hmm. I I, st- I saw him at five and then I didn't see him until mm-hmm. I was 23. Mm-hmm. And he was just disappointed that I didn't go to college, you know, and he doesn't really think that my dream was realistic or whatever. So, you know, as a young kid, I was like, I'm going to make it and I'm going to change my name. I'm not going to wow. use your name. So that's Is why I'm Jackie so Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Is you had there a challenge. relationship now? He's blocked right now. Right, yeah. Mm. See, and you know what? What's crazy about that is when we do pop, it's so it's so genius. It's so you know what I'm saying. Either it's a I knew it, or now what? What if that was a dream crusher for you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what if you really took that and you didn't use that as fuel? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to a deposit, you just say, you know what? That's my withdrawal right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because those words from someone that we look at a certain way could mean mean a lot more. And it's crazy that your words from your dad meant less than your words from Melly. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like when you think about like the relationship. So now when you see people. Listen, I don't don't want to talk bad about him though. Not at all. You know, he was young, a teenager, you know, so. And and I'm talking about just just in general how now you can empower how you can exactly. enlighten and how you take so much pain, whatever it is, and you put that into your music. Mm-hmm. And you've been writing your album, I'm pretty sure, your whole life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so how do you take this life experience and make the album? Well, that it's like therapy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I got to work with someone who understood like what I was going through. And um, definitely, uh, you know, I, I started the album. I had already a few songs and... Things just ha- came very organically yeah. and very quickly. Like it almost quickly. wrote itself? Yes. It, like it almost wrote itself. Do you ever get scared to be so vulnerable like as you were on Melly 16 and Make Me Change? Like does that scare you or does yeah. that like give you release? It gave me a release. And every time I sing it, I feel it. You know what I mean? Like that's that's my little baby. And um, it's so, it's so vulnerable too because that, I don't know. That's my sentiment. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like it, you don't like me. And, uh, you know, I stopped chasing people, too. You know, I stopped chasing producers. I I stopped chasing writers. I just started to work with people that wanted to work with me. You know, you got a chance. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You got a chance to link up with Nina Sky. How was that? That's amazing. Yeah. So Nina Sky DJed an event that I was performing at. Uh And I said, one day we're going to make a song together. (laughs) And of course, you know, they're like, sure. (laughs) And then it just happened again organically. We were in New York. You know, I was with my co-writer FIFA and it just happened naturally. That's awesome. Yeah. And it was pretty incredible. Is that FIFA that was at our... Mm-hmm. Yes. Real oh. Street Fest. Yes. Hello. Uh-huh. Go yeah. ahead now. Co-writer. I ain't yeah. mad at y'all. Why, yeah, yeah. why choose to sing in Spanish and English, especially in songs together, literally from mm-hmm. one sentence to the well, next? Well, that, that's who I am. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's basic conversation pretty much. Huh? Yeah. English. And you know what? Like, I'm... First generation American, just mm-hmm. like my character was Flaca, and that's what made her blow up because we never seen that on screen mm-hmm. before. Like a girl who listens to the Smiths, Erasure, mm-hmm. you know, like all these rock bands, and she's like wears black lipstick and eyeliner, and she's kind of like us, and we never we never got to see that. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that's who I am. Like at home, we speak Spanish, and at school, we spoke English. Mm-hmm. 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 What do you think about for uh, twenty twenty that's coming around the corner? in the state that we're in as far as presidential does Mm. that scare you like because the the rewind already has been ridiculous for me yeah and i I wouldn't even want to speak a second term into existence and you've been on the front line and you've seen it and there's there there has to be a lot of effect 
Mm-hmm. What does politics do? Does that scare you, empower you? Does it make you think more? At first, I used to be scared to mm-hmm. talk about it, but now I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to speak up, to fight for what I believe in. And, you know, Carmen has made me really powerful when it comes to using my voice. And um, and she's, she, you know, she, she informs me. And I literally, like her husband, Jay Jordan, he, I don't know if you heard of Time Done, you know, he uh, actually Nipsey Hussle performed mm. in Time Done. I opened up with mm. him, for him for Time Done a uh, concert. And it was, you know, there's 70 percent restrictions after prison. And it's like you're still in the system. Yeah. And yeah. that's why you keep going back because mm-hmm. they don't want to free you. It's like an invisible prison. So there's just so many things that I didn't know about. And um, I'm just really lucky that I can use my voice and people are actually listening to me. And um, it is up to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think the the kids, they're noticing that we're, we're the future and we need to speak up and we, we can't sit back and let these people make decisions for us anymore. I'm very excited. You um, are going to be in the new season of Good Girls. Yes. Oh, my God. Do How you did know this what come- it's about? Yes, I do. I love the show. Do you? No. It's about three women who rob a supermarket. <laughs> okay, oh, that's dope. So but when you hear it and then you watch it, you're like, this is more than just what they kind of led yes. on with. There's so many deep stories in there, how they're connected, the women and their struggles and how they kind of have to like step up. Yeah. But then shit gets crazy. Yeah, you know, moms, moms yeah. are badass yeah. too. <laughs> Uh, can I say that? Yeah, of course oh. you can. <laughs> like, you already oh, did. So sorry. Yeah. She's uh, like, can no, I say yeah. ass in here? Please? I don't know. I want to. Um, I want to come back. So people are like really excited that I'm going from one amazing show mm-hmm. to this thing, which is so dope. Another, you know, show about women yeah. empowerment and helping each other. And you know, I get to be a mom, oh, <laughs> a baby mom, yeah, baby mom. <laughs> somebody's baby mom, yeah. and um. A, a dental hygienist, yeah. which is something new for me. <laughs> and it, and, and now watch it. After a couple of seasons of this, you know how Orange is the New Black changed views. You're going to start to be like, man, I got a crusade for these teeth. <laughs> yeah, like, teeth. what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, gums and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but it's crazy because Hollywood is already, the work is limited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then when you come off of something that's so good and be able to say, oh, okay, I kind of leapfrogged. Yeah. Right on to the right on to the next thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because not that it doesn't happen, but I mean that's not everybody's story where you come off of something great and get into something great. Yeah. So but so, yeah, this show's blowing up. Do yeah. you still have to audition? Did you have to Hell audition yeah. for the I audition like, every day. Every single wow. day I audition. Like today I have an audition after this. Really? You oh, don't just yeah. walk in the room like, hey, you don't know who the F I am? Yeah, people no, that's not how it works. <laughs> really? Well, number one, they probably think I could only play that character. Mm. You right. Know? So are are were you afraid of the so called typecast? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. That's why, like, I went in like her, this character's is called Ray, mm-hmm. so it's not like uh, you don't know yeah what, where she's from, mm-hmm. you know. So it was really cool to just go in and and be a woman, mm-hmm. be a mother. I know a lot of people, of course, associate you with Orange Is New Black, but also the long hair. And then you yeah. went and you gave yourself this amazing pixie cut. Yeah. When you did that, was one was there a reason behind it, and two, what did it feel like? To lose all, not so, lose it in a bad way, but lose it in a good I way. When I was growing up, my mom always said, you're going to make it because your hair. Oh. <laughs> your hair, your hair. Because it was like below, you know, over here and it was curly and mm-hmm. beautiful and everyone always complimented me that. So when I lost it all, you know, at 16, like I'm like, you know, oh. now that's not, I'm not beautiful anymore, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, as I became old, you know, I needed to grow out that hair again, which I did. Yeah. And I became this new person, which was kind of like a fla- the flaca. Mm-hmm. And then while I'm doing this show, I'm like growing up and, and feeling confident. And I'm like, I really never needed my hair. Mm. <laughs> so slowly while the season is going on, I made the, you know, people buy me a wig. And I was like, <laughs> you wig. So I was wearing a half wig on yeah. orange for, for like four years. Wow. Ah. Yeah. So like they kept. You know, and it was. You was over there messing up the continuity. Yeah. Like, baby, stop cutting your hair. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know what these wigs cost? And then I started getting a bunch of tattoos. So, like, Flacco only wears, like, long sleeve yeah. or whatever. Because there's no way that's a prison yeah. tattoo. That's right, 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 right. <laughs> Man, you got a hell of an artist in there. And why we never see you sit down to yeah, get your tattoos? Exactly. And I'm like, so I just, you know, started becoming myself and growing up on Orange and realizing that this is who I want to mm-hmm. be. Is that you know, where you found? Right now, this look right now is, I chose it. Yeah. Is that not where... Hollywood, not my mother. Yeah. <laughs> and, make, and Make Me Change, do you feel like that's part of that whole song? Exactly. So Make Me Change, which I call Zitzy now, it's my godmother, is Hollywood, you know, it's like, 
I was afraid to speak up. I was afraid to, because maybe you wouldn't hire me. I was afraid mm. to be myself because maybe you wouldn't like me. I'm mm. different, whatever. But like now I'm like, screw that. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to cut my hair. I'm going to be me. And the moment I started being myself, everything happened for me. Yeah, That's My beautiful. music, my that. everything, everything. And it took me a long time to get here. And I'm still trying to like be confident. And it takes work always a work in progress mm -hmm. though, huh? and uh of course and now i'm like the new face of kat von d beauty which is insane yes. uh, i don't know if you know but kat von d does um, yeah yeah is that the test? Test? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so when i was on orange season one i said one day <laughs> i'm gonna get a kat von d campaign i swear yeah. to god no you didn't because um flaca wears a tattoo mm -hmm. eyeliner that's dope <laughs> and then seven years later you know organically i would always go to their events you know i would always be done up i'm like yo if you ever my makeup artist if you ever meet kat von d people tell them that flaca uses the liner yeah. and then um seven years later i have a global campaign the new the new First face of Kat Von D. Yeah, because you've God never works. seen anyone so awesome. associated with That's really cool. So, I mean, imagine like getting chosen not because of my lashes or the way I look or my hair, but because of who I am, you know, so awesome. and, and, and it's a beauty brand. Is there anything represent? that you can talk into existence for me for the next seven years? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? Tell me what, what you want. want. I don't know. It's going to be all materialistic. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even I want you to you. block your blessings. We'll, we'll like, we'll talk about it all after yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that way I don't want anybody else to, you know. Know what I got? I want to do. Yeah, then we all get in line because we don't tell people anything until we already ate. Uh -uh. You know That's what I'm saying? True. We don't talk about little lot of numbers. None nope, of that. None <laughs> you know? of that. Jackie Cruz, continue to speak. <laughs> yes. yourself, continue to speak for us. Congrats. Thank you for coming to the neighborhood so much. and come and just sit in with us too, just on on, yeah. on current event issues as thank well. You. Yeah, thank anytime you. you want me. All right. Well, I'll see you Monday. <laughs> all right. Thank you right there. No, but thank you and and congratulations. Can I say one more thing about my album? Please. So, Ija de Chavez is is I am the daughter of Chavez. That's what it means. That's my father but every song is dedicated to the women who raised me and inspired me so yes. Madeline Tia Lucy Tia <laughs> Millie Melly 16 and my Zitzy Bucky I heard that and then down <laughs> down the road somebody will put your name in their song okay. or you know or as an inspiration <laughs> I'll take yeah. it continue to, continue to inspire uh, thank you so much Jackie guys Cruz in the neighborhood me. Big Boy's Big Neighborhood boy.